That sound did we, wonderful. Did we, did we cover it? We, yep. we did it good. Mm -hmm. We got a good show coming up this week. And there's some new uh, activities going to go on, but uh, we'll get to that as soon as you do your thing. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Instead of telling you about an affordable communication service that will save you money for a rainy day, I'm going to let one of my clients from Columbia Dental Group tell you all about Host My Services. You're not losing any service, your phone calls, you don't drop any calls, have any issues at all. They have the app where if you have an off-site person, they just have the app on their phone, they can use it from there. Like you should definitely get a quote because even buying a whole new phone system is cheaper than what you're going to pay for with Verizon or AT&T or anybody else through them. And the quality is just the customer service. Customer service, I talked to him. There's two things to remember when checking out Host My Communication Services. Number one is free analysis of your current communication cost. Number two is there's no capital outlay for the equipment. Two great reasons to call 931-581-4411 today and start saving for that rainy day. People in Tennessee are starting a movement. Ouch. Thank you. To clean up the litter on our roadways. Litter hurts our environment and endangers wildlife, and it affects our quality of life. Here, cut me. Thank you. Help keep our state litter free. That's true. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and be a part of the solution to end littering. Saving the best for last. That's right. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right, just got a couple of announcements. We've got the... Uh, Fall Classic this weekend, and just so everybody knows, between class 14 and 15, there's going to be a costume party. Now, our costume class, they're going to judge the costume, not the horse. So it can be, I guess, he can be flat shot, or yeah. padded, whatever it wants to be, just about anything. But uh, we're going to find out, and we're going to find out how the judges are, because they've got some, they've got some good ones: Renee Carlton, Lee Boyd. Givens, so we're oh, going to yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be watching. My ha I've had more calls this week wondering how them judges are going to do. I say, well, just wait and see. Watch I think they, they do, do a good job. 
I, I, I hope I, I hope I believe so. they would do them three good people that judge. Well, I, I, I know Leah and um and Gibbons. I think that you know. Well, I, I, think I, I didn't show in front of them before, and I they they judge a pretty good show. Well, everybody's going to be watching. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but I'm going to say it. 20, 25 years ago, we had people in the stands that were fans. They, mm -hmm. they come because they just wanted to see a horse. Uh -huh. We don't have that anymore. No. We have very few fans in the stands. What we have is horse people in the stands, mm -hmm. and they know a good horse from a bad oh, horse. Yeah. And that puts the pressure on the judges because the people in the stands can see all those horses. Yes. And they'll see if a horse messes up in front of this judge or messes up in front of that one, then they can look at how that judge tied the horse and they can say, yep, he's tying above the saddle. That's the problem that we've run into. Plus, now everything's videoed. Yes. So you, you can go back and see it. it uh, coming up in November, we've got the United Show, and I want to really push this because today we're going to be showing some video that shows what's going to happen if we lose our lawsuits. But before that, we're going to Tunica, and tun Tunica should be a great show. Now, we do have some, I know uh, Gold Strike is the host motel, but we do have a block of rooms at Samstown. I'm not sure if there's any of them left or not, but if you call Samstown, call the front office and tell them that you want to get a room, that you're having problem getting it on the internet. Yes. Wednesday and Thursday is $39. Friday is $79. And then Saturday is $89. And that's, that's a pretty good uh, discount that is, that for really the room. Discount, so that is. Just give them a call and find out. Also, I'll remind everybody, Christmas is coming up. And Christmas, we have the final, what, the last I've got of Richard's Jewelry. And uh, the only item in here that's not Richard's Jewelry is that anvil there for a blacksmith. But it's, uh, the rest of that is all Richard's Jewelry, jewelry that he came up with. I've talked to several people about different pieces that they're interested in. And I do have a couple of men's rings that are big, but basically this is it. I think I've, I've got a, I've got an antique double horseshoe ring that I think is just unreal. But uh, it is, uh, this right here is be good for Christmas. Yes, it will be. So just anybody interested, just see me at the horse show. Give me a call. Uh, I'm out there at Uncle Nearest Jerry Williams stables quite a bit. So I can let you see it just about any time you want to. But uh, it'll be the last chance to get some of this because it will probably end up either going to another jeweler or they'll be doing something. February the 1st uh, is when the new rule is supposed to take effect. Now we're going to be showing quite a bit of video today that uh, shows uh, exactly what we're going to be losing if the final rule takes place. But there's things we need to realize. And number one, the HPA, HPI, that's Horse Protection Inspector. This is the, what I got this week says, for any events that have Tennessee walking horses, racking horses, there is additional information that needs to be submitted to APHIS within five days. I don't know what that additional information is going to be because this obtains to all horses. And it boils down to this, that you have to let APHIS know at least 30 days prior to an event that you're going to have a horse show. Then you're either going to have to hire an HPI or contact APHIS to get one of their VMOs. In other words, you're going to be looking at dollar signs across the board. Yes. And these inspectors that they're getting 
are not necessarily equine people. They're going to be training them to do things. So we all, we both know what that caused. We couldn't even find BMOs that could agree with each other on a horse, whether it was in or out. And now they're going to be training people to come in and do this. I've seen their qualifications. Of course, they want equine vets to do it. But if you have to hire one of their BMOs, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg because they're going to come up with this stuff where they have to have their guards, they have to have this, they have to have that. So basically, all these other breeds that are standing out there and saying, well, they're only after the walking horse, they need to read what this new rule is. They need to t and honestly look at it and understand that it is all breeds, yeah. not just a walking horse. Even this right here, this notice that came out, horses racking other horse, other equine that do exhibitions or shows, sales, they have to do the same thing now that we do. They should have been doing it for years. Yes. But for 50 years, they've dodged the bullet. That's not going to happen anymore because I guarantee you, they have spent 50 years pointing at the walking horse, telling everybody how bad we are while they skated by, and even when they found a horse, which I'm not even sure they even looked to find one, they probably every now and then said, well, let's just try this one because Joe Blow over here didn't like the way that horse went. Yeah. So they found something on him and said, ah, oh, we'll suspend him for two weeks. Nobody ever knew it. The uh, USDA said, well, there's no sense to inspect them because they don't soar their horses. And then they find out, well, yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it just, Jerry, the whole thing doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me on what they're doing and, and why they're A lot of things don't it. make sense the way that they th go around stuff, you know. It, I mean, I know in all these other breeds or whatever, it has to have some kind of violation that go on, but we are the only one that get publicized on stuff that happened in our but we're the range. only one that's really inspected and our horse, horse for 50 yes. years yes the rest of them just give them a quick glance and a how we under and and now it's come back to bite them because these new rules weighted shoes the whole nine yards and i've got a saddlebred guy that calls me quite a bit and asks me about this and he, he asked me he said they're after us too, aren't they? I said, they're after you, they're Pasapino, the Morgan horse. There, there's a bunch of breeds out here that people don't even think about that they're going to be looking at. And once they start looking at everybody, it, it's, it's going to be completely different as it is now. Now, I will say this. If our horse was actually abused and needed, what they're wanting it'd be different. But everything that hurts our horse is already against the law. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that punish people that you catch, punish them if they've got anything on the horse, foreign substance or something. But there's no sense in punishing everybody, everybody. for the actions of a few. If I'm gonna do that, hey, I might as well Go out here and say, well, that guy ran a red light, so give everybody coming up and down through here a ticket for running well, a red light. Well, it's just like this last weekend, the college game. I think they had this one um, college player that got fined for taunting after he made a touchdown. Yeah. But they done him. Yeah. They ain't do the whole college league. Right. They didn't do everybody. They just did they him. They did him. And that's the same way with this, to me, in this industry. I mean, you find somebody that's doing something wrong or whatever, you find that person. Not the whole make an example out of. Them. That's right. And, and I mean, even if it takes going further than what we now we suspend them for time. We give them so much time, but they go back and and they go back to the barn. They do all this. You if you honestly find somebody that is breaking a the law, there are sentences that they can serve. Anything like that, but doing what they're doing now wanting to take, punish everybody because of what Joe Blow did really does not make any sense. Well, I mean, Jerry, really on, on another thing of that is this. Just because a horse moves around 
that don't mean a horse is sore. I know. Because they proved that with the salad breads and everything else. So you have to have some kind of scientific fact that's to tell that that horse is, have been so well, I've heard whatever. this from year, for years. I've heard multiple trainers say it. You really want to see a horse, you look at him, you don't see any scars, anything wrong with his feet, put a four ounce chain on him. If he can walk off, then he shows. If he can't, then hey, you're that, gone. That, and then as Simple as that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. It does not take a genius to figure out a way to make sure a horse shows that should show. And the ones that shouldn't show should, you know, something should be done. I always say horses, just like people, you got some people you can barely touch in the side and they'll jump and you got some people you can grab and do whatever and they'll just stand there. And so that's the same way with, the, with that animal, yeah. you know. Well, so. they done showed that they're, they ain't inspecting a saddle bread like they do a walking horse. <laughs> Good luck. And, and I'm sure it's going to be the same with Morgan's, Pasifino's, other horses. It's just, it's just use common sense. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if, if a lot of people, especially in the government, knows how to use common sense. I don't know. A horse is a horse, regardless on what breed he is. He's still at the horse at the end of the day. He don't have a different kind of blood vessels or heart because mm. he's a different kind of horse. He, he's still a horse. He got the same thing. So a lot of them will say, well, saddle breads can't, you can't pick their feet up because they ain't this. They still a horse. Oh, well, well, I, ain't, I, I don't buy that crap from yeah, them. Yeah, I don't I, either. It, it just, they, they can dream. What it boils down to is just common sense. Yes. Common sense and doing what's right and not worrying about what some group over here that wants their way. It's kind of like one guy said, we got a group of people over here that don't like vegetables. So instead of them just not eating the vegetables, they don't want nobody to eat vegetables. Yeah. You got another, don't want meat. Well, since they don't want meat, they don't want nobody no, else to right. have meat. Let people do their thing, but leave us the hell alone. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way I look at it. I know what kind of condition my horse is in. Other people can go check on their horses. They know what kind of condition they're in. The pads, the action device do no harm. So that's it. Adjust, go with it, and get it done. That's the way I believe. The other things that we're gonna do, I've got a little video today of a horse that I, it's one of my babies. I named this one after a legend. Named him Pap. Everybody knows who Pap, if you're in the horse industry, <laughs> You know who Pap was. Yes. Billy Gray. And this horse, I'm, I mean, he, he, you can look at them back legs. <laughs> That's Jerry's daughter leading him around. But now he, he just, he's got that swagger. And he, he's alert too, buddy. That's a good moving coat right there. But, I mean, I, I like him better every time I see him. That's a prime example with this horse, with this horse, that horse is born walking that way. I know. And them legs are just crooked as all get out. But he just, uh, to me, he, he's something special. He's something special. And I am looking forward to Watch him as he progresses. Yes. I, I, I just like to lead him every now and then. I, don't want, I do not want him to be a lead line wingling. Yeah. If, if I still own him, I want him to get out there and run around a while in the pasture and get stronger, and then we'll start That's starting right. him like mm -hmm. you did, like you did this next one. Here's a coat that we've got the first package on. We were getting ready to start him, but Jerry got hurt during celebration. So he got carded. We he has been ridden what five times? Yeah, mm -hmm. five times. He's got a little starter package on him now, but he is he has been carded, and that's Jerry. That was last week. Yes. So we're getting ready to put the next foot on him, and I, that's what I'm looking forward to. Once that next foot goes on, we'll. That we'll get, he's getting better and better every time riding. 
Uh, hey, I, I, I love him. He's smart. Yeah, he is now. very he, smart. Now, he's the one that we put a video out of you trimming him. Yes. And he just stood there and let you do what you wanted. Uh, we, we've told this story a lot, which even I got you on it a minute ago. Fathers lose horses to their kids. Mm -hmm. Mothers lose horses to their kids. Uncles, aunts, grandfathers, grandmothers, they always have a kid. One of their children come along and take that horse away from them. Well, we had a world grand champion this year that got his horse taken away from him. And it got taken away from him by his little brother. <laughs> and as his grandfather told me, he said, that's Ridge's horse now. <laughs> so look here, here's Ridge. This is the first time that he went outside on the medalist. Now, Eli, his older brother, won a world championship and a world grand championship and multiple championships from Alabama, North Carolina, you name it. But now that's Ridge. <laughs> he is the younger of them. Oh, yeah. So he is getting ready. That's a good horse right there. Oh, yes, he is. That Ridge is, I believe he's seven years old. That horse is fixing to turn 17. Mm -hmm. That's the Tennessee walking horse, and that on his back is our future. Yep, that's right. And that's a fact. That is the future. But I asked James, I said, Eli, give that horse up? He said, he gave it to him. He said, he'd done what he wanted to do now. That's Ridge's horse. You know, just look at that horse. That horse is a, a good 15, 16 hand yes, horse. Yes, right he there. is. He's a big horse. He's a big horse. <laughs> and you know, and it's going around out in the opening, and that horse is going around. So you don't think that horse has been well taken care of? Well, we may see him this weekend. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, I fully expect that horse to be in the ring with Ridge on his back. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to go to East Tennessee, and we're going to see some victory passes from up there. I do appreciate Bob Roach. He, uh, I called him and I told him, I said, Bob, I need some videos. You mind furnish them? He said, you just name him. He's a good guy. Yes, he is. Hey, and right here is Joe Pod, Shane Porterfield, your amateur gentleman winner. And now that, 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 that's, that's what you call a walking horse right there. I believe they gilded him. Yes. Uh-huh. You know what that's getting ready for? Juvenile, Juvenile class yes. is fixing to get tight. Yep. Because he now right there is a piece of work. Joe Paul, Shane Porterfield, super good guy too. <laughs> Shane's a real good guy. Right here, he's a lucky striking Aubrey Derrickson for Ralph Derrickson. Your amateur ladies. You can't she, say she's part of her youth anymore. Yeah. She's done growing up and become a lady, went in the lady classes. So. That's a nice horse. Yes, it is. It's a real nice horse. That's a good saddle. And here's L Predicted Storm. That's her equitation horse that she showed in the canter class. Okay. <laughs> Allie Joe just likes to show. Oh yeah. I mean she she doesn't care, just let me in there. And here she is on the hoss. One that went in the pony class. I had a lady tell me the other day that Allie Jo Jacobs was going to be another Sister Milligan. <laughs> Said she's going to show in every class she could. In, but now she's got it on Sister because she showed in the lead line, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can brag about that. I showed in the lead line. <laughs> <laughs> Beat Bobby jo Jones. Well, you know, on that right there, Hey, if she can do it, do it. Let her show as much as she wants to hey, show. 
That's it. You know, ain't nobody. And here she is on I Sing Dixie. Yeah. Now, her and R.M. Kelly won this one right here. The pro aim class. But this young lady, she, she loves one thing. She loves Tennessee walking horse. She loves to ride. Well, the thing of it is her, her family loves her. Her parents love her. And she they're going to put her on a horse. Right. And if I can do the same thing, and anybody else can do it, you can do the same thing for your kid. I'm going to do it. You better believe I'm going to do it. And there she is. She won the 11 under championship. That's two nights in a row that horse show. Yes. The Hoff. That's a good pony. That is a good pony. We have a lot of good youth that oh, yeah. coming up that's going to get better and better. All right, now we're, go we're going to talk about the classes that we will lose. Now, this is what I want people to realize. The classes we will lose if the final rule goes into effect. And everybody needs to realize another thing. That final rule, they can say what they want to, but it falls right in place with everything that the Humane Society of the United States want it. Yes. Keith Dane and his bunch, that's exactly the way they wrote it out. They can say what they want to, but you it that's plagiarizing. That's yeah. what that is. They they took exactly what the Humane Society wanted and put it into their rulemaking. Mm -hmm. This is a class that we will keep. Yes. We will not lose the wingling class. We will keep it. And I'm doing this for a reason. I love these babies. Yeah. I love to watch them move. But at the same time, I like the performance horse. And I like to watch the performance horse perform. Yes. Even though I love to watch these. Here's your yearling class. We will keep this class. Well, in all actuality, and I'm not taking that from nobody else, but this is why you have these winglings and yearlings mm -hmm. is because of the performance horses. You That's look it. at these horses. And here's your model. We will keep them class. That's right. That you class. keep the class. Uh huh. But if you look at the yearlings and winglings, you look at the dads, and nine out of ten, most of them won a performance class. That's it. That, I mean, you're right. That, that's the one you get for breed. We have flat shot yeah. world grand champions, world champions that breed. But the majority of them are performance horses, padded. But now, here's another. This model class, we will keep. Here's country pleasure. Yeah. We will keep the country pleasure class with no band. And I love watching that. I truly do. You know to me, and I might be finna put my foot in my mouth yep. when I say this. All day pleasure, we'll keep it. Is just like sports. Everybody like different sports. But if you take football out, it takes a big picture. You take a big picture out of it. That's it. The soup, the the Super Bowl is the, one of the most watched TV shows. It is. Yeah, I know. But now they got basketball, baseball. But now, have you asked everybody watched that the Super Bowl? Oh, everybody watches the Super Bowl. It's just like this. And the same way with this. I mean, I, these horses here is good. I like a good flat shot horse, trail pleasure horse. But well, I mean, it just we've got one. Yeah, I've got one. I mean. It, it's part of life, and, and I like them. It's not that I don't like them, but I'm not going to go to a show to where that's what I've got all the time. We need, we're we going to take a short pause for our sponsors. We'll be right back because we got a lot more video. <laughs> Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultures and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, 
Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one in a lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab-grown diamond viewing, call 931-563-7800. Hey Tennessee, Ross Chastain here, the guy who likes to smash watermelons on the front stretch at Nashville Super Speedway. But you know what I never smash? Safety rules. Racing's all about control, and the same goes for life on the road. So use your melon and don't mix drinking and driving. It's like trying to race with a busted engine. Be a pit crew hero, and if you've had a few, pass the keys to a sober friend, because we're all racing toward a safer Tennessee, and we want you there at the finish line. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. going to be moving pretty fast because now I want to show everybody what we're going to lose because this is a padded class. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll lose our lead line class. No pads, no action device. Now, if they come in with no pads, you will have the lead line, but it will be flat shot only. Yes. And I want to probably to understand something. I'm not doing this to knock any class. I'm really not. But what I'm doing this for is for people to realize what we're going to lose. Amateur, classic walking horse. Now, these are our horses 15 years and over. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose this class. It's going to be gone. We won't see horses like the Heisman there who retired this year. And you can see how them horses right there. I mean, them horses are over 15 years old and still compete like two year old horses out there. Walking, shaking, doing their gait. Yep. That horse, Deuce, right there, he's a real nice horse. Up, don't you? And here's owner amateur novice walk. Now these are walking horses that have never won a world championship or a blue ribbon at the celebration. But they're performing, smooth gated. They're not laying <laughs> down. I mean, it's just I'm pointing out all this stuff to let people know that this is what they want to take yes. away. And these are the classes, and these are the classes that make up a class sheet. Yes. At every one of our horse shows, except the PETA and Woe shows. Elite owner amateur walking horses. That class will be gone. He's running a long time. Now late riders ask your horses to go in a running walk. You know, I, I admire people that, that just like horses because they're horses. I like flat shot, I like trail riding. I love all that, that that's fun, that, that's doing what you want to do. And i tell you something else, that's like doing that celebration time right there. You get to see a lot of people you haven't seen all year long. That's right. That comes to town. That's it. And visit. It's like a big family reunion. We'll lose this class. You pony, six to yep. 17. Riders, ask your ponies to go on a run and walk. 
I don't think a lot of people realize all the classes that will be gone. Yes. But we're showing every one of them that will no longer be available for people. And some of these, the majority of these people, do not show in flat shot class. Yeah. So they're taking them completely out of the industry. On our amateur two-year-old walking horse class, it will be gone. Along with the majority of the people that show them. Yeah. And on the other side of that, Jerry, a lot of these horses That's will right. be gone. They will be gone. I guarantee you they'll be gone. And these horses live to do that right there. They love to perform. Here you show pleasure, six to 17. And we're just showing pleasure. A lot of these horses, all these horses are performance horses. They're padded. But what I'm pointing out is the classes that will be lost we're going to show all these and then we're going to show you all the collateral damage because this you're going to lose the people who invest in these horses you're going to lose the people who show these horses you're going to lose 99 percent of the people sitting in the stands yes. right there because you can go to a a 100 flat shot show and the only people there are the people that are showing sure, that's right a lot of these people right here are not going to ride a horse. They're just coming to watch. Watch, yep. Here's your amateur park performance horses. These horses will be gone along with the ones that are showing them. The majority of them anyway. do all that, we might end up back in the racing business. Yep. Five-year-old walking horse class, amateur. It will be gone. I've never seen Bob Adcock in a flat shot no. class. I've never seen Sister Milligan in a flat shot class. There's a lot of these people I've yeah. never seen in a flat shot class. A lot of the youth I've never seen in a flat shot class. Yeah. And here's a light shot walking horse class. Now, this is a heavy shoe. Yeah. This class will be gone. I don't think a lot of people realize that from talking to them. But I guarantee you, when they start taking the heavy shoes, that class will be gone. The park pleasure will be gone. I mean, if you think about it, if you went, if that ruling go through and you can't have nothing but just a keg shoe. That's it. On that horse, Three year old I mean, horses be gone. How many classes can you have with a keg shoe? It's according to what show you go. They come up with a lot of different classes for them, and you see the same horses showing over and over again. And and I can see where a lot of people that enjoy that, that's one thing. But a lot of people don't enjoy that. And I enjoy a good good flat shot class. But I'd rather watch one of these. Yeah. I mean, that's just my preference. 
and the fact that we have more people that want to show these performance Formal horses yeah. than we do wanting to show flat shot, then that's that's the main thing. This class right here, the fine harness. It's gonna be gone. Now that's not to say they can't have a pleasure class. Yeah. But this one will be gone. And you know, I haven't seen a pleasure class, I don't think, at the celebration since Wallace Brandon showed in it one year. I cannot remember another one because for flat shot horses. Yeah. And that was just the two wheel courts, I think it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's two year old Mary Gildan. The class is gone. And I'm showing all this because I'm hoping that people will look, pay attention, then contact fast and say, hey, We'd like to help fight this and win this battle in court. Yes. And I tell you, ones that need to be paying real strict attention is the Saddlebred, Morgans, and Posifino owners and riders. Here's your amateur pony class. That will be gone. Anything with a weighted shoe, bands, or pads will be gone. And that includes all three of the ones that I yeah. just named other than the walking horse. Of course, the racking horse, it will be gone. This is class will be gone. Yep. This is an amateur class. And if you look at these classes, look how many of these people were in multiple classes, mm -hmm. especially the amateur division. And I guarantee you, you see all the people in the stands, they're not going to be in the stands. No. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm going to tell you, that class is gone. It just sat here and you look. Oh, yeah. And So many performance For horse classes. Yeah, that's right. Padded horses. You're six to eleven. stop me you think about everything that you're going to lose it kind of eye opener oh yeah it is eye opener this class will be gone
Another one be gone. Ask your three year olds to go to run and walk. For years they have just come up with classes mm -hmm. for specific courses and riders. They divided them up all to create an avenue for charities to make money. <coughs> there, Bob. Your three year old yeah, class, class here. Mm -hmm. Take the photos, and you've got a job to do. Here, your four year old. It's our yeah. Entry, it's our horse. In many regards, it's our moment. It's definitely our end moment. When this class is over, we want to leave no doubt. We love the Tennessee walking horse. class will be gone and I know I'm saying that a lot but I, people need to realize what we're looking at One thing I want people to remember is how long it took us to show the classes we're going to lose, lose. Yeah. versus the classes we'll be able to keep. Mm -hmm. You are right. That we're going to get to keep. We're going to get to keep very few. Matter of fact, it's going to boil down to model, country pleasure, all day pleasure, classes like that. Now, of course, they can say, well, we'll do a two year old country pleasure, a three year old country pleasure, a four year old country pleasure, and a five year old country. You're not going to see a whole lot of difference. Yeah. Where we do see a whole lot of difference in between in, the horses and the performance horse. Yep. And the way they perform, the way they do their gait. We have some that are far more walking. Some are show gated. I mean, it's just uh, there's so much difference, especially when it comes to the excitement. Oh yeah. see any tail braces. No. No horse will have a tail brace. And I mean, you think of the amateurs that's doing this, you think of uh, some of the trainers yep. that won't be, uh, be being, uh, you know. No. Trainers won't be there. But, and you look at what we just now said. So, now, the people that make the pads, that business is going to be in hurt. 
They make the ones that make the shoes, no heavy shoes, they're gonna be in hurt. Bands, they're gonna lose the bands. Oh yeah. Tail braces, don't need no tail braces, so now you don't need no tail sets. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it put a, a bunch of these families in a bind too, yeah. you know, trainers family that they, they do this to support their family and everything. We're just touching on the collateral damage. Yeah. Just put, pointing it out that you got trainers going to be out of business. You got different business, tax shops. Yeah. They'll be out. Leather companies, they'll suffer for it. Feed companies, a lot of them will suffer yep. them because a lot of them turn these horses out in the field. Yep, they'll be turning them. them out and letting them eat grass and hay. Yeah. Plus the veterinarians. Yeah. Blacksmiths will will definitely be, be hurt. Especially ones that do performance horses. Because it takes a whole lot more to take care of a point horse than it does a flat shot when it comes to shoeing. You just imagine, and I'm gonna just pick out, I'm gonna just throw a name out there. You just imagine Callaway, they feed bill, how much they pay the feed company every month oh. to take care of all the horses they have out there. For me. That's right. I mean, Jerry, look, look at your bill each Oh, yeah. Look, but I'm talking about horses, you know, I think Callaway got some over 90 something head of horses that they got in the stall over there and they feed. Well, it, I mean, it, it's. I mean, that's a. So, I'm gonna tell you another thing that's gonna hurt. It will hurt the breeding. Yes. It's going to affect a lot of people, a lot of different ways. We'll see people who have come here and bought homes that don't live here, but maybe a few months out of the year that they come in for horse show season. We've got people come from Australia. Yeah. And I look at all of this and realize that all of it depends on what a judge decides on the evidence that he's been given. Yeah. And the evidence that he has been given helps us. We got to take a quick break because we got more video. We'll be gone. <laughs> The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3, and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. Okay, we're going to go straight into some more video, but we're going to be talking about the collateral damage. 
and what it's going to do. We've already discussed what it's going to do to businesses, but look at the charities that are going to suffer. Your Lions Club, and this, this, the ones we're showing are just partly because you've got independent shows out here. The Kiwanis Club, they're big in the horse industry. Disabled American veterans, wounded warriors, they yeah. get to, Civitan International. All of these are going to be suffering because of no Bedford Cancer Foundation. That's a major, major charity in Shelby. Horseplay, therapeutic riding program, they'll be affected because they raise money from the horse Horses, shows. Yeah. Angel Tree, Salvation Army. Now these are the Camp Smile a Mile. Look at mm -hmm. what they're going to lose. All of these are charities that are going to suffer because of the decisions made right now by a judge and what they decide on how we go forward yes. in these lawsuits. Veterans of Foreign War. BFW will be gone. Shriners Hospital, they get a lot of help from the from the walking horse industry. I mean, it, 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 it's ridiculous that they've harmed so many different avenues of charity that really the horse helps because of what the Humane Society of the United States wants. Yes. That's why I'm asking everybody, contact FAST, anybody with FAST. You don't know them, get in touch with me. I'll put you in touch with them. We need to win the lawsuits, and we need to keep our pads, we need to keep our action device, and we need to keep our industry. Yes. That's what it, that's what all this depends on. Contact FAST in Shelbyville, Foundation for the Advancement and Support of the Tennessee Walking Show Horse, and that will benefit the Saddlebreds, the Fossafinos, the Morgans, and all the other breeds that are in the same situation we're in, we just realize it and they don't. Oh, yeah, you're you know, right. that's a shame. When you got some people that see it and other people that have no, no idea, idea what's mm -hmm. fixing to happen. But they will. Question is, will it be too late? Yeah. We're gonna see everybody at the horse show this weekend in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Anybody got a question? I'll be happy to answer it or I'll put you in touch with somebody that can answer it. Yep, y'all be safe. Have a good one. Be careful. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, please start talking. Thank you.